yes people and there you have it so arsenal three southampton one and uh let's dissect this game i mean from the backs to the midfield to the fours let's go step by step because there's some players in this team that we honestly just have to talk about them uh first of all thoughts of the game stress stress surprisingly i watched arsenal play versus psg midweek yeah and i'm seeing arsenal playing against Sutton uh this weekend and you ask yourself honestly speaking what, what what we did a span of just three days what has changed we played so well there was this precision there was urgency yeah there was there was this killer instinct that he had in that psg game then you're playing against a team that currently is sitting in relegation 19th or pro probably 20th or 20th after this game and you're struggling against sort on fc Honestly speaking, there's some players in this team, and I'm not blaming. I'm actually not even blaming Ateta, actually, but the big up Ateta for those triple change you made. That is exactly what he needed, and that is that is what exactly changed this game. And big up Mikel Ateta because back in the days when he was still early, when he was still new in the club, uh, he would take time by the to make decision. But today, that decision he made of uh, the triple, the triple change, that is what completely changed the game, and. Uh, Let's, let me just say this. Gabriel Jesus, anyway, we'll get to him later on. But David Dreyer didn't have much to do. Uh, made some saves, but also gave me stress. Uh, There's some minutes, I mean, thinking the additional time. Was it the ninth? It was, it, was, it was the 90th minute. Southern actually almost scored. So, really can't blame Rai. Didn't really have much to do. Gabriel Jesus, uh, Gabriel Jesus. Uh, Gabriel Magales and uh, and uh, and Saliba basically doing what they always do. Thomas Partey also played okay in the right back position. Actually, today was playing that right back position just as he was early last year in the first leg when Mikel Arteta was still trying to come up with, you know, trying to test the waters and trying to test different systems. So Partey was okay, but in that right back position. Califiori, my God. Honestly speaking, by the way, well, anyway, listen, uh, maybe I'm being too critical. It's still early days for him as far as the club is concerned. But let me say this. Today has exposed Califiori. There was this part of me that was quite skeptical with his defense, with his, with his, with his, defensive, uh, with his defensive side. But in today's game, there's a problem. And I think that needs to be sorted out. Honestly speaking, I'm seeing Califiori. And I'm just, seeing another, I'm just seeing another Zinchenko. What's the difference? Going forward, the guy is playing some good football. But when it comes to defense, I mean, look at the game he played versus uh, Man City. Look at how Savino gave him a rough time. Look at today's game. The Sotom player was actually giving Califiori a hard time. So honestly, Califiori, maybe still early, still trying to settle on the team. Seven games in. But uh, there's some things on that defensive bit he really needs to improve and with with the uh, jure and timba and tomiasu coming back in uh, believe me if he doesn't improve his game he's going to be benched we go to the midfield Jorginho. listen uh we've seen Jorginho at his best at chelsea but the truth is this he's done Jorginho. in fact i watched the guy play I didn't even see him get the ball. He's supposed to be the creative midfielder. He's supposed to be creating things. He's supposed to be, we're supposed to be seeing, you know, I even don't know why Mikel Arteta didn't even play it in that game. Honestly, it would have done a better job than uh, Jorginho. So Jorginho, for me, I think he's done. He's done. He's no longer the Jorginho. The football has left him. So he's no longer the Jorginho that we saw uh, a while back at Chelsea. Now we go to... Declan Rice, at the moment, I think the system we are playing is also confusing for Declan Rice. He's all over the place. He's losing balls. He's not as clinical. Uh, so Declan Rice, I've also not been impressed with him so far. Uh, yeah, Declan Rice, nah, 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 nah. So, I mean, let's go to Harvard because apparently Harvard today was playing in the midfield. At, at the same time, I was also seeing him, you know, switching. There was all these diamonds all these diamond things that are actually going on today as far as the game is concerned but honestly speaking kai Havertz, from all the players so far 
Kaiva seems to be the bet he seems to be the better player from all these players that I'm actually seeing in the team. Kaiva seems to be he seems to be the best player right now. Imagine me saying that. Kai Havertz, the guy who most people are written off, most people didn't give a chance, including me. But Kai Havertz at the moment actually is playing good football. The goal is scored, man. What a goal by Kai Havertz. So, Havertz is a weird player. There are those moments that, like the first half, we really didn't see much of him. But the second half, immediately scored that goal. The guy got in the game and, honestly speaking, <laughs> looking at Havertz right now, He's the best player as far as the team is concerned. Now we go to Saka. Uh, an assist, a goal. Saka played all right. Uh, though he, should, he could have done better. Uh, but still not there yet. Sterling Jesus. Now with Sterling, but they will give him, will still give him the benefit of doubt because it's still, still early days. Seven games in. Uh, still early. Don't be really harsh on him. Still needs to settle on the team. But uh, the match I saw him play today, vis-a-vis -vis what I saw him uh, do at Chelsea, there's no much difference. So Sterling, man, you guy, you better, you better, you better get your act together. A player that I think we need to sell this January is Jesus. Honestly, Jesus, I think the club is now as as we are playing right now. Cause get this, don't don't get me wrong, Jesus. Two, two years ago, when he came from Man City, he was among the players who really, really contributed to the team. You know, us getting where we are at that time. But honestly, looking at Jesus right now, I think he's done. Jesus is not. In fact, by the way, Jesus cannot even bench Kai Havertz. Imagine that. Kai Havertz, the guy who had written, the guy who most people had written off. Looking at Kai Havertz's play, looking at Jesus' play, there's a very big difference. Jesus is so poor. He's losing balls. He's so wasteful. You know, that's the thing that pisses me, Jesus. He's so, 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 so extremely wasteful. I mean, look at the chances he had. I think Jesus, when it comes to January, we need to get rid of him. Honestly, I think he's done. Uh, Martinelli got a goal today. Uh, Trossard, well worked. Uh, Merino, still... Still has to settle the team, so let's give him time, yeah? But for the match I've seen him play uh, the PSG game in today's game, it was quite slow, yeah? Quite slow and lethargic. But anyway, let's still give him time. Still coming from an injury, still settling in the team. But uh, listen, Arsenal, man, if you guys want to win the Premier League, there's some games. Goal difference is a factor. Today we are playing against Sutton. I personally thought actually we'll go past these guys. My score prediction in my match preview was 6 nil, And shock on me. <laughs> I was stressed the whole time. The first half. Let me just say the first 60 minutes of the game, I was stressed. So, listen. If you want to win games, second of games, you need to bury. You need to bury. You need to finish your dinner early. But then, listen. We move to the next one. Uh, next game, I think we're playing against uh, Bournemouth. So, I'll be seeing you guys then.